Welcome to Random Malware Attack, this is Poor Nelson, and in this tutorial we're going to be using Substance Painter to basically bake out all the different maps and to start to texture this gun. We're not going to get to a finished product, we're going to get to the point that you see right here where the base materials are set up, some dirt and detail are added in, but that's about it, saving the, the, the final detailing to the last tutorial. We're going to try and make this tutorial short and sweet, so let's go ahead and dive right in. As always, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and comment below. So we're going to go ahead and start here, go to a new file, select the mesh that you want. So I have to already baked off from the last tutorial. Um, let me find that right there. It is just low polygon and that's fine. We don't need any maps because we haven't baked anything. And so we're going to go ahead to texture settings, go to bake textures. Now we don't want all these maps yet because I want to kind of save time. So I just go to normal, go to 248 right there, and then we can load up the high polygon. So just right there. And then you can play around with things. The different settings. I, I want the average normals on, otherwise with edge splits it's going to cut it really weird. Um, this one, I don't really need that one, so I can turn that off, bake it out, and you can see, hey, it looks actually pretty good. There's some weird stuff going on here, uh, but pretty much most of it looks pretty good. And so there's, there's a couple of things we can do that are really easy fixes. You're never going to really get a perfect looking thing, but as you texture it, it starts to kind of hide some of the, the, the smaller things. But the big mistakes are definitely need to be fixed. So to fix this, I'm going to go ahead and go to Blender. Go ahead and go to my low poly, duplicate that with just Shift D and then hit M to move it to a different layer. And I'm going to select everything and type in triangulate. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to export that. Go back to Substance Painter. Now we're going to go new file here. And let's go ahead and load that. So there we go. Now the same things. Now it's a different model because it's triangulated as opposed to quads. Turning off all the maps, um, getting the high poly, making that 248 like we did before. Gonna go ahead and bake that. And it takes a little bit of time, but there you go. It's not too bad. Now you can see this is a lot better than before. It's very smooth. You zoom in really close and you can see there are some artifacting, but that happens no matter what. It's just because the pixel count. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bake out the other ones. Now, we don't have anything for Material ID, um, but it's not going to work. So you, you could check, check it. There's, there's no poly mesh. There's nothing like this. So it really doesn't matter. You could do random, but it really doesn't work the way that you think it would. So we actually need a, a Material Map later. Let's go ahead and bake this. And it takes a little bit longer. That's why I only do the normal map first to make sure that it actually bakes the way I want it to. Now you can see the different things kind of being added at the same time. Um, it might crash. Nope, it's good. Okay. <laughs> so the ID map was pointless. You can see that there. But you can see the ambient occlusion. It's looking really good. And I'm liking this. Now I have these different textures too. I can kind of like pull this in. So let's create a fill layer. You can see the different textures. Let's change this to UV scale 1. And you could actually kind of play around with that as well. So it's really cool. You can use this for maps. You can use this for different textures. Great stuff. Now I do want the ID map, so what I'm going to do is go back to Blender. So I'm just going to kind of grab this. This is hard, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... If you look, you can't just select the different like meshes that you want. So you need to remove the doubles first. And then uh, kind of change the distance, like 0 0.001 is fine for this. And now as I click this, it's still not working. Um, so it's not that, so go ahead and hit Control E, clear seams. And now it should work. Now some of these things like doesn't work out the way you think, but for the most part you can click L. So I'm looking at the different materials. I kind of have this dappled plastic, this this white plastic, two different types of metal, this shiny and rustic, kind of like a burnished metal. So let's go ahead and do this. So go to the materials, new, and make it a very bright color like this. Okay. And then you can hide the things that you want. So I just hide that. So that blue thing is going to be my white plastic. Now I'm going to add a new material, change the color, do it substantial. You don't want like blue, light blue. You want something very different. And then I'm going to sign it here. And I'm going to hide these things right here. So this is kind of the rough metal. There we go. Now I'm just going to double check, make sure I got everything and missed a couple of things there. So just hit an L. And if I hide that, now I can kind of go through. I'm going to grab these up, grab these little metal things because these are also metal. Hide those. And then the bolts were also that metal material, so I'm going to grab those and hide those as well. Just with H. 
and it looks like we got pretty much everything. It's kind of like that. That's not the shiny one. That's more burnished as well. So I'm now going to get a different material. Add, so like a red. Hit a sign there. So now everything's red, except the things that are hidden. Now there's some rubber here, so I can kind of just Alt right click that, turn off that back face selection, and just grab these, Alt those. Okay. And now I'm going to just assign a new material. So create material. Make this like a yellow color. Hit a sign, and then you can hide it. This is also kind of the rubber, so I'm just going to side that, hide that. Select these here. Oh, we can see that there's some weird stuff going on here too, so I'm going to go select these faces with C select. And so I'm trying to sign. Oh, I forgot that wasn't back face. So just grab all these. Now I just kind of go through this. It's not important to see the, the whole thing, so I'm going to kind of just fast forward here in a bit. But I'm just assigning the different materials. So just creating new materials, selecting, assigning, etc. So now I have this done, and you can see that I have all the different materials. And this is looking pretty good for all, all of our intents and purposes. If you ever find that you miss something, you can always go back and change it, or there's some things that you can do within Substance Painter itself. So I'm just going to export this out. So I'm just going to call this ID Map 2. I already have an ID Map from previous tutorials. So I don't need this to be a high poly mesh because I'm just getting color information. So I'm going to cut, turn off everything except ID. Load up this color mask here, the, right here. And then I need to change this to material color. Uh, that looks good. So I'm going to bake this out. And it takes a little bit, but there you go. And you can see the color maps are looking good. If I actually drag this in right there, you can see what the color map's going to look like. Now, you're never going to see the color map. There's some errors here and there, but it's it's looking fine for the most part. We, we can kind of work around this. For all intents and purposes, this is looking really good. So let's go ahead and clear that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start to create these different layers. So we're just going to do a couple, and then I'm going to fast forward through the rest. So I'm going to call this plastic, white plastic. Do this um, just rubber, shiny metal. There we go. Rough metal. OK. Now each of these, I'm going to kind of create a fill level. And this, so this is the plastic. So I kind of want to get the plastic. It's like this orange white color. And I'm trying to get this, but you can look at the reference. It's, it's white, gray, yellow. It's, some of it's from the lighting, so it's kind of hard to see perfectly. So a cool trick is you can just kind of like minimize this window, put it off to the side here. And then I have this color picker, pull this up. Oh, I guess I have to put this off to the side like this, put this off to the side. And I can kind of just code through and get the base colors. So color pick this, and that's a pretty good color. Now there's some lighting differences, so you might want to kind of play around with it, get it what you want. But then I'm just going to go through all of these. So let's go ahead and do another fill, put that in there. Grab the base color. This is the dappled plastic, so I'm just color picking that. Now I can duplicate it if I want this. Move it up here. Now this metal, is it's, it's a little bit harder to get the metal color right. So again, color pick this. Let's go ahead and go to the actual layer and then crank metal up so it kind of looks like it. It's looking okay, but it's a little too dark. Change the roughness a bit. Change that up. And then I can kind of just duplicate this one because I can just make it darker without color picking it. And then make that rougher. Much darker. Now, I have all these base materials, so I'm going to right click and do add mask by color selection. And then you can actually click this and then pick the rough metal that you want. And so it masks it. Now you can't see it because everything down below is kind of not masked. So I'm going to grab this again. Grab the shining metal. It was purple. Okay. Now there's a couple errors that we're going to see, but we're going to fix through those later. So let's just pick these. So that's the dappled. And then the white plastic. There we go. Now we're going to get everything else later, but I just want to get these four set up. You can kind of see some mistakes here. So some cool things you can do. Right click this and hit paint. And it's going to allow me to actually paint. So if I go here, click this, and do like triangle. Change this up to black so it's actually getting rid of it. Oh, we want white to make it actually part of it. Now it's working. That little artifact there is from the normal, not from the actual map. We can go to, oh, this isn't the right color. So I'm going to go ahead and go to kind of uh, mesh. And I just grabbed the whole mesh right there and made that kind of the more tarnished color. So that's looking good. So you can kind of go in and add a paint layer to the mask as well. 
Now, if there's some other stuff going on, I'm seeing this. If you look at these artifacts, that's kind of being caused by the baking. It didn't bake very well. And so I'm, I'm just kind of rearranging these, trying to see if that fix it, and it's not. So I wonder if we bake this, if we actually forgot to turn off that setting. So let's go ahead and go back to the bake and go to turn off that back face mask there. Oh, still kind of getting some artifacts. So maybe it's with the normal map. So let's go ahead and go back to bake. Let's load the high poly, so delete that. Load the high poly right there, yep and then bake that out. And okay, yep, sure enough, the settings weren't there. So just click off that first checkbox there. Now I'm gonna kind of do these four different textures and make them interesting. So let's go and look through these. So the first thing is the dappled rubber. So first of all, zero metal, but we kind of want it to be the soft roughness like this. Now a cool thing, we're gonna turn off the normal, but we're gonna to go to alphas and just kind of find a circle. Uh, so let's try this one right here gonna drag it into where it says height and you can't see anything so I'm gonna increase the UV scale and you can see it's too pointy that one's also too pointy it's it's almost working but not quite so I'm gonna change it to height and bring it down to kind of make it less so I just went to layers heights and then I scaled that down that's actually working really quite well it's not lining up exactly so you can kind of do that's the max UV scale I can do huh it's just too big so thinking about this for a little bit, um, let's change the rotation at least, get the right rotation. Let's look at the reference. It's, it's, it's much smaller than we have it. So what we can do is kind of try planner. Oh yeah, try planner is gonna work for us really well. Change that down to the scale you want. That's pretty good. You can kind of change the, the intensity of it. Now on the real thing, there's kind of shadows in between this and highlights. So I'm just gonna duplicate this layer right here. And I'm going to take off the height, I'm going to take off everything but the color, and I'm going to drag the alpha into the color like this. Now I'm going to the color thing, hit multiply, and then change the mix down so it's not 100%. And you can kind of see that it's giving some highlights. You can do overlay if you want, that's actually some pretty good stuff too. But that gives some depth to it. Now right in here you can see that there's actually not the dappledness to it. So what we can do is we can actually add a map to this. Now I'm going to right click this and hit paint. And then we're going to paint in the triangles black. So it's going to take this mask off. So I'm just going through there. And I'm getting these. I'm unselecting those. So it's not dappled, but you also see that it's not... Uh oh It's not plastic at all. It's not, it's not the rubber that we want. So I'm going to take this layer, duplicate it, put it underneath. Like this. Uh, clear the mask. Oh, there we go because we don't want the mask at all. And then we're gonna also take off the height. So now there's no height there. So it's the rubber material without the, the dappledness. All right, and we do it to the other four things, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna skip that. So again, if that's too strong, you can go to height and then just kind of change that down. And that's looking really good. I like that. Now the plastic, it's it's not very interesting. It's just a very shiny ugh, look. So I'm going to go back to color, click the plastic. I'm going to add a fill layer. I'm going to take off color. I'm going to take off everything except roughness. Now I have a texture. These are custom made textures. And I'm just going to kind of bring this in. I'll put this above the color there. There we go. And you can see it adds a very nice little look here. So I'm going to go to roughness layer. I'm going to change the opacity so it's not 100%. So it kind of mixes the two. And you can see the different highlights, and it just adds a little bit more interest into it. All right, there we go. So same thing with the metal. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the metal, uh, do a fill layer above that, grab this into the roughness, take everything else off, and ah, that's almost right once I right what I want. I can change that down. I can kind of change the different mixing. I don't have to just do normal. I can do like overlay and things like that. I can actually put the color too and then do multiply and then it kind of looks like dirt as well. So roughness level on the next one, do another one, throw that into base color roughness, UV to tri planar, kind of change the scale, hit multiply and then just kind of change the opacities to what I want. That's a little too gold for me. Yeah, I, I like it. So let's change that color there. So go to color, grab that, 
change it down, desaturate, make it a little bit darker. All right, so that's more or less how you do this. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna kind of uh, fast forward through the rest of this. But before I do that, actually I wanna add some dirt. So I'm gonna just do a layer, not a fill layer, but just a layer. I'm gonna grab a brush. Uh, there's a couple of dirt brushes just right out the gate. Let's look at what that looks like. Oh, that's not bad actually. I can change alpha so I can go and grab some different alphas and put that into the alpha like this. There we go. And now, ooh, that's looking really good for the dirt. Now I want it to be a brown that multiplies for the dirt. I want the roughness to be up right about like that. And then the height to be, no, nah, I don't want any height whatsoever. Because as you're adding height, you can see that it looks just garbage. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and kind of paint through this. Now you don't want it this dirty, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of layer this. So I get some dirt and then I go in and erase some of it. Oh, gonna change this to multiply, change it down like that. Roughness is good. And now I click erase. Let's get a different brush here. Let's try this one. And just kind of erase around like this. A little bit of dirt here, increase it. And then you kind of layer it. So now we're gonna do another layer. Same thing, but instead of 42, we're gonna have it be like 56, 64, something like that. Uh, just add some more dirt, erase some of it. So there's not a lot of dirt on these different guns, but there is some texture to it like this. Erase that, get it down to the level you want. And you kind of just play around with this. You layer it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you can see that there's some like dirt and grease spots on all of these, these guns. And so as you kind of layer it, it, it adds character. Try and get to the level you want. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this. I do have all the files available on my Patreon for free. Uh, this is a Blizzard kind of asset, so I'm not trying to sell this, hence there's no commercials or anything like that. Uh, but do consider supporting us on Patreon. It helps me make these tutorials and it helps me provide more content. We also provide a lot of other free assets uh, via my Patreon. Also follow us on Twitter. We like hearing from you guys and we put news updates on that as well. So thanks, and if you have any questions or comments, do do interact below. I do like talking to my, um, I, I do like interacting with my different subscribers. That's that's very enjoyable. And also, if you have any comments of how I can improve these tutorials, let me know. I try and keep them really short so that it's not a lot of slogging through things, but rather it's, we can kind of just get through them fast, get straight to the meat, and then you can move on with your life sort of thing. Uh, also, what else would you like to see next? I am more than willing to uh, do different types of tutorials. I think I've heard a lot of people want some more substance designer tutorials, get a couple of textures, so I have a few of those in the pipeline as well. So thanks for all of your patronage, uh, patronage uh, supporting me, and have an awesome day. And I still have about 20 seconds left, so that, that's awkward, just kind of sit here. <laughs> Seriously though, thank you. It's really fun to make these. Have a great day.